No, if there's anything you need to know about me, right? If you haven't seen me before, it little, it, all you really need to know is I'm a bit of a lazy man and I like to smoke weed. <laughs> and you know what? It's always done me well, that. If you, as I said, my background is fucking doing comedy clubs and hosting most of the time a hot water comedy. And in that job, you can do it stone most of the time. You can get up, oh yeah, what do you do? I'll get away with that most days, do you know what I mean? But when you have something on this scale, you've got to get marketing people involved and business people and media people, and they are very pushy. And they phone you up in the morning, like, what's the show going to be about, Paul? What's the theme? We need to get posters done. And I'm like, I haven't got a clue, mate. It's half nine in the morning. I've had two joints. Fucking leave me alone. <laughs> I don't fucking know. I'm planning this shit out. The first tour I did was called I You Mate because I say hi you mate to people. That is the level of thought I put into that whole tour. <laughs> and you know what? I got away with it. It was fine. People laughed. I, was, I enjoyed it. The second one was called The Following because it was The Following Tour. <laughs> Again, that one didn't take me very long. This one, you know, I sat down, right, and I thought, I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, Paul, you've got a big opportunity here, mate. You've got a big opportunity. Not many people get to do places like this and you should, should take it seriously. Sit down and actually fucking make an effort, mate. Try and fucking do a show for yourself. And I did. And I sat down and I came with a whole show and another theme and ideas in it and shit like that. And it was called Changed. And ironically, the show's had to change about five fucking times. <laughs> and I'm not fucking doing it again. It's going to all fuck off. I'm going back to winging it. I don't give a fuck. Too much effort, don't like it. Do you know what this show was meant to be about, right? This show was meant to be about February 2020 when I came up with this show, right? What it was meant to be about was the fact that I was fucking minted. <laughs> I don't want to come across as a show off, but I was fucking minted, mate. Like, don't get me wrong, I wasn't like Alan Sugar. I didn't have a jet or nothing, but I'm from a council estate, me. I was out of my overdraft, it was mad. I'd never seen anything like it in my life. It was incredible. I was doing stuff I'd never dreamed of. I was walking around Tesco's, not even using a fucking calculator, mate. <laughs> incredible scenes. Didn't give a fuck. Money was no object. I wasn't even buying their own... Sh I wasn't even buying Tesco's malted wheats. I was buying shreddies, mate. <laughs> not even the little one, big box, not even waiting for an offer. Not even one. I was just putting my arm behind the shelf, fucking getting the trolley. <laughs> made it. I knew I'd made it, right? When I got to the till in Tesco and they were like, have you got a club card? And I was like, fuck off, no, give them the points. What? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking big moves, that, you know. And, and it, you know what? It changed me. I'm going to be honest. The show was called Change because having that money, it, cha it turned me into a bit of a cunt. <laughs> I hate to admit that, but it did. And you know what? It surprised me that because I never thought I'd change like that. You know, I'm, when you're from a place like me, like when you're from a rough area, I'm looking around the room, most of you don't understand this, right? <laughs> I am from Carrie <laughs> When you're, from a, when you're from a rough area, I, I, I think the best people come from rough areas, but when you're from a rough area, you... There's one, there's one fucking rich fella in here going... I thought, they, I thought we were good people, Jane. Apparently the peasants don't like us. Jesus. It's these cunts in the box, innit? <laughs> When you're from a rough area, though, you, I mean, you will have asked this question or you've been asked it. Hey, do, you, hey, hey, do you reckon if you got money, you'd change? Do you reckon you got money, you'd change? And I've always been like, fuck off, no. I'm from the streets, mate. <laughs> I wouldn't change. And you know what? I was fucking incorrect. <laughs> I didn't even, I, I, I didn't even need, need to become like a millionaire or not. And I got about 10 grand in the bank and I was like, shut up, peasant. Don't talk to me. <laughs> got a fucking blue tick on Instagram, mate. Get away. <laughs> 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 so, you? you know what? I can see how it happens to celebrities and that now, you know. Like, you know when people meet a celebrity who's a bit of a cunt, and I can see how that happens because it sneaks up on you that cheap. You don't realise you're a cunt. It's, it's like getting fat. You don't realise you're fat until you're fat. <laughs> I've been there, you don't realise. You, you look at yourself every day in the mirror, you're like, how oh, I look all right. And then you see a picture of yourself two years down the line, you're like, fuck off, who went me there? <laughs> Why did no one tell me I was a fat cunt? That's what happened to me. I turned into a cunt and no one told me. I only realised, right? I only realised. I've only been driving a few years, me, right? My first ever car was a little Peugeot 108, right? And I, it was a white one with orange wing mirrors on it, a little ginger mobile, and I loved it. It was a fucking beast. I called him Leo. People used to take the piss out of that car, ruthless, and I didn't give a fuck. Because he was fucking, he was a perfect comedy car for me, very economical, very easy to park in a city centre, right? But all of a sudden, got a bit of money in the bank. All of a sudden, Leo wasn't good enough for me anymore. 
didn't even realize I felt that way until I've come out of work one night, right? And I've gone to get in the car. Some lads just walked past and he clocked me, right? And he's just gone, fucking hell, Paul. Is that your bird's car? <laughs> and that had happened before, right? That had happened before. And I'd defended the car before, but for some reason on this occasion, I didn't defend the car. I just went, oh, oh yeah, lads, she's got my make, you know. And I pretended I had a Mercedes Benz to a fucking complete stranger, right? And I was gutted. I was gutted at myself. I got in, I was apologising to the car and that on the way home. <laughs> so sorry, Leo. I don't even mean it. I don't know why I said that. And I got in the house and I was thinking, fucking hell, am I a cunt? I think I'm a cunt. I think I'm a cunt. Why am I pretending to be something I'm not? Why am I acting like that? And I started smoking weed, right? And I don't know, if, I don't know about you, but when I smoke weed, I have a little weed brain, like a little voice that wakes up in my head. And he is fucking sound. <laughs> So supportive. <laughs> so I'm sat there thinking I'm a cunt. I'm like, I'm a cunt, why am I doing that? Why am I trying? I'm feeling dead bad about myself? I had one pull of a joint and he just woke up and went, nah. <laughs> You're fucking sound, you bro. And I was like, do you reckon? He went, yeah. You're one of the soundest kids I've ever met, bro. And I was like, well, why am I doing that though? Why am I acting like I've got a make when I haven't got a make? Why am I trying to be something I'm not? He went, nah. That's not because you're a cunt, lad. Do you know what that is? It's because you should have a make. You deserve a make you, bro. You work hard. And I was like, do you reckon? He was like, yeah, get a make. I was like, nah, it's a bit much. And he was like, get a make. Right. Very tenacious as well. Wouldn't let it go. Trying to forget about it. Just trying to watch the telly and chilling that. And he's just in the back of me. I'm like, get a make. Get a make. Get one. Couldn't sleep or anything. Just trying to sleep. And he's just in me. I'm like, oh, Lord, won't you buy me <laughs> a Mercedes man. <laughs> and I woke up the next Saturday morning night. I woke up and I think I was still a bit stoned. Because he, he's still going, I'm going to make, going to make, going to make. And I was like, fuck it, do you know what? I'll just go and have a look. I'm not going to buy nothing. Just go and have a look. If you shut up a bar, I'll just go and have a little look at it. So I get to my little go kart, right? And I drive down to the Mercedes Benz showroom. Now, it's always been quite an aspirational thing for me, a Mercedes Benz, and I never thought I'd get there. But when I got to the, when I got to the showroom on the forecourt, they had one of them little A-class ones out there on a ramp with a big sticker on it saying, Sale! £4,000 deposit, 279 quid a month. And I thought, ooh, it's a bit more than the Peugeot. <laughs> but maybe we can afford them, eh? Maybe we've made it. Dream, believe, achieve. <laughs> and I got a bit of confidence in myself. They even walk a fucking swaggered Conor McGregor style into the fucking... <laughs> Thinking I was the fucking boy, right? Bounces into this make showroom all full of life and that. But Saturday morning, tracksuit on, stinking of weed, right? <laughs> and that is a mistake. I didn't know it was a mistake because I've never been in there. I've only ever been in a Peugeot showroom. And I'm not knocking anyone who drives a Peugeot, by the way. I think they're very good cars, but it's just a different, it's just a different experience to the Mercedes-Benz showroom. <laughs> You can walk into the Peugeot showroom on a Saturday morning with a tracksuit on, stinking of weed, and they are very happy to see you. <laughs> they make you a cup of tea, they'll sit you down, they'll let you drive one of the cars round. Mercedes, mate, you need an appointment just to stand near a car, it's weird. <laughs> I didn't know, I had no idea. I've walked in all full of, like, full, full of confidence in that, and I've walked up to the reception, I've gone, hi, love, eh, can I have a little look at the little A-class one outside? And she's looked at me and she went, have you got an appointment? And I was like, oh no, sorry, I didn't know I needed one. And her head fell off. <laughs> like it never happened in the history of Mercedes Benz that someone had had the audacity to walk in off the street and try and buy a car. She took my name and she was like, but you're not on the system. But you're not on the system. And I was like, I know I've just walked in. She couldn't believe it. She was looking at me like, oh, well, um. Uh, the, uh, the best I can do for you is say, see, see, can you see the tables over there? I went, yeah. She went, just have a seat on one of them. And we'll just have to get round to you if we can. And I thought, if you can. Is that how it works? Yeah, I just sit there and hope you can sell me a car. <laughs> and you would think that would put me off, but it fucking never. <laughs> oh my God, that made me want that car so much more. <laughs> oh, why? But I was walking to the table thinking, fucking hell, I'm getting this car now. How good are these? They don't even have to sell them. I was looking around the showroom thinking, I wonder how long he's been there for him. Like he'd been there for three months, like, oh my God, I hope I get one today. <laughs> oh, I miss my kids so much. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
So she took me to this table, right? And I go to sit down. It got a bit, I, as I go to sit down, I had a bit of a to-do with this guy, right? He was already sat there. He sat there, and he's a big guy, right? And he, he looks, I cannot, I've been struggling with how to describe this guy, right? He's quite a fancy-looking fellow. He's a big guy, but he's in, like, a fancy suit, fancy shirt. He had even his pen and his fucking cufflinks. Everything about him was, like, he looked expensive, do you know what I mean? Like, he was proper minted. Like, I had a bit of money, but he would always be minted, do you know what I mean? Like, if you had to draw a Tory, you would draw him, do you know what I mean? Like, he had one of them big fucking red gout noses like he'd only ever had cheese for a seat, you know what I mean? Like, fucking proper... Like, not the type of person I would normally mix with, but I'm a very nice man, mate. And the way I've been brought up is, right, the way I got brought up is, if you ever make eye contact with a stranger, right, you just let on, all right, mate, all right, and that's what happened, right? I've gone to sit down. He's looked at me, and I looked at him. We made eye contact, and I went, you're all right, mate? And he looked me dead in the eye and just went... I know, just sorted, and then fucking blanked me, and I was like, eee! <laughs> and then the woman went, eh, have a seat there, Mr. Smith, and I'll, get, I'll see if I can get someone to come over and talk to you about the A-class. As he's in the A-class, he's looked back at me again and gone, <laughs> Like I'm some kind of scruffy twat, right? And I'm fucking, I hate him. I don't hate many people, but I fucking hate him, right? And I'm sat there just looking at him, going, look at me again then, look at me again. <laughs> you big fucking knobhead. And he won't look at me now, he's just staring straight to Ed, he can feel me, he's just staring straight to Ed, right? <laughs> then, this sales manager walks over to him, I clocked his badge, the sales manager walks up and he's very polite and he goes to this guy, hello, can I, how can I help you say? And he, just, he doesn't greet him or anything, so really he just gets him and goes, follow me, right? And just marches him off to the middle of the showroom where there's this big fucking silver thing right in the middle of everything with up plates on it and stuff like that. And he's got this poor guy going around this car for 25 minutes asking him all kinds of questions. He's fucking, he's under the bonnet, he's around the wheels, he's fucking sits in every seat. He's, he, he's in a, he nearly got in the fucking boots, I thought he was going to shag the car at one point, right? <laughs> Then he comes back down and he sits down and the, guy, the sales manager's like, what are we thinking? He goes, make me a coffee. Right? Just orders him to make him a coffee. And he does. He just scuttles off. Goes and makes him a coffee. Comes back with his coffee and some paperwork and he's looking at it going... <laughs> yeah, it's reasonable. It's reasonable. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll just give me a couple of hours. I just need to run a, a few things past the accountant, but uh, I think we're good to go. And I was like, ugh. <laughs> then I got tapped on the shoulder and I've turned around and it's a young kid called Joe, right? And, and he goes, hello, sir, I'm Joe from Mercedes-Benz. I believe you want to have a look at the A-class. I'll take you out to look at it now if you want. And I just went, no. And I don't know why I said no. And he looked confused and I was confused. <laughs> and he's got his little clipboard and he went, oh, sorry, it, it is Mr. Smith in it. I went, yeah, yeah, yeah. He went, oh, sorry, it says here you want to look at the A-class. And I went, nah. And I don't know what happened. I think I was still a bit stoned because my wee brain could grab this arm for a second. I went, we want that one. And I pointed at this fucker's car, right? And he looked at me then, mate, because he was like, don't you dare. And I was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I swear, it's the most powerful I have ever felt in my entire life. I felt fucking phenomenal until I looked at Joe and I saw him looking at me like I was a fucking dickhead because he's clearly seen me driving in a fucking Peugeot 108. <laughs> He's watched it happen, and now I'm sat there in front of him with a tracksuit on, stinking of weed, and he wants to go, fuck off, mate. But he can't, because he's in work, so he leans in and he goes, hey, hey, mate, you do know that's the S-class, don't you? I was like, yeah, 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 didn't have a fucking clue. <laughs> he goes, hey, it's the grand edition, that, you know, it's got everything on it. I was like, yeah, that's the one I want, yeah. And he was like, have you looked at it? I was like, nah. And he's going, he's, he's, he's looking at me going, mate, are you fucking stupid, right? <laughs> But he can't, so he goes against the key. We're walking towards the car. I'm trying to think of some intelligent questions to ask him, but I know fuck all about cars. So I just get to it. I opened the door, I sat in it, it was dead comfy, and then he let me turn the engine on. I revved it once, it sounded amazing, and I just went, I love it! <laughs> I don't know. I, I knew it was weird, because all the way up until that point, he'd be like, hello, I'm Joe from Mercedes-Benz. And as soon as I said I love it, he dropped all out, my full-on rough-ass scouse. He was like, fuck off, lad, really? <laughs> <laughs> and, I don't even think he's allowed to sell these cars. He'd only been here about two weeks. That was like his year's commission. <laughs> he went top salesman straight away. He fucking legged it to the sales office. He's come back like juggling paperwork and that, right? <laughs> Drops the papers on the desk and that is when I seen how much the car was. <laughs> fucking 95 grand. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh, fucked up here. I'm going to have to leg it. I'm going to have to leg it. <laughs> nah, I'm going to have to run here. Fucking hell. Where's the Peugeot? Where's the Peugeot? We're going to have to go. We're going to have to go. I mean, we brain pipes up. He's like, "What do you mean you're gonna? Oh, we're gonna have to buy this car. Are oh, you gonna make us look stupid? You can't let this fellow in. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to buy it. I'm just gonna have to deal with it." I was like, "What do you mean I can't buy a 95 grand car? Are you fucking mad?" And he starts getting all persuasive on me. He's like, "Think about it, Paul. You just had a good year, mate. You just had a good year. You just done an arena for fuck's sake." I was like, "I have yet, but I still can't buy a 95 grand car." 
He's like, but think about it, mate. Your next tour's on sale. It's going to be the biggest one yet. Tickets are flying out for it. It's going to be incredible. I was like, it is yet. He went, so what are you worried about, Paul? 2020 is going to be your year. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? And I was like, oh, yeah, sign. And I bought this fucking car. Two months and I had that car. And then every theatre in the country closed down for about 15 months. And I was like, ah! I can't afford this car. Fucking crippled me, mate. It ruined me. It was the worst thing I've ever done. Do you know what, right? You think I'm funny on stage? You want to hear me phone fucking Admiral? <laughs> I'm trying to ensure a 95 grand, three litre beast of a Merc when I've got two years no claims on a fucking go kart. <laughs> they think that shit is hilarious. They were passing me around the office and shit. I couldn't see them, but I fucking know I got a stand innovation at the end of that phone call. <laughs> Italian you me, fuck it. Oh, Joe, you know it's all well and good having an S class, it really is. The lovely cars, but when you can't afford to put diesel in it, it's so shit. <laughs> I, wish, I wish that was a joke, but it's not. There's been points in the last two years when I've been sat in that car on my driveway, <laughs> just unable to move. Just sat there because it's the comfiest place in my fucking house. <laughs> just, just 